Hi guys, welcome back to another Bourbon Santa video. Today we're doing a special release, Shanks. And um, this is Shanks Homestead, which is a sour, sour mash. My brain was just wanting to say sour patch. That would make no sense. Sour mash whiskey. Um, this is the 2021 edition of Shanks. Now, Shanks is, it says on the bottle that it's produced by Mictors. And this is their legacy series. It, uh, you know, calls back to the previous names of the Mictors distillery. And so you have Shanks and you have Bomberger's, which were two names, previous names for the, the Mictors distillery. The one thing that bothers me about the label of this bottle is it just says bottled by Mictors. So it doesn't even say produced and bottled. It doesn't say distilled. It just says bottled by Mictors, which, which makes me wonder, you know, I mean, it does say on the front distilled and bottled in Kentucky, but wh why, why, why would you put that on the label? Why wouldn't you put, I mean, unless it's sourced, which it could be, if you're making the, the whiskey yourself, why aren't you putting distilled by, distilled and produced by, distilled and bottled by? Don't put produced. That just leads to all kinds of speculation. We don't want that. We don't want speculation. We don't want this gamesmanship with labels. Tell us where the whiskey comes from. I don't care if you source it. Just tell me. If it's delicious, I'll be just as happy as if you made it yourself. Just be more clear. Clarity, please. Clarity. Same problem with Bomberger's, which I'm going to do next. Um, Bomberger's says the same thing. Bottled by Mictors. So, whatever. Let's see. I have with me, because this is my only Mictors bourbon at the moment, Mictors American, that we can compare just to see, just to see if it rings any bells. See if it's in the ballpark. I know I probably could get a different bottle to compare it to, but this is my favorite Mictors, other than the Rise, the Barrel Strength Rise. But, so, you know, whatever. I'm not gonna run out just to buy a bottle just to compare, so. I mean, I would, but I'm not gonna. Now this is finished in a very weird oak that I cannot pronounce. I'm not even gonna attempt it. The staves for these barrels were seasoned for three years, so that's longer than a lot of a lot of companies are doing less than a year. They're kiln drying them. The ones that are air drying staves, they're doing it for like two years. So this is an, a long time to dry staves, and it is a funky um, kind of oak. So let's see what we get. Maybe we'll get some funky stuff. We got some funky stuff. We got some funky stuff. What the heck is that on the nose? It's... I, I looked up some stuff before this, and I think one of these is finished for like two years in French oak. That might be what I'm smelling, but now that I'm on the spot, I can't remember which one said that, which one Victor said for sure had that two years in French. I like that nose. I like that nose a lot. That is, it's like, it's like varnish, like um, stain, like a nice wood stain. Like, like you just walked into a woodworking shop where someone dropped a bottle of whiskey and it shattered on the floor and mixed with the sawdust. There's chocolate. There's a little nuttiness, but it's like, it's like either, it's like almond. It's very close to almond. There's a creaminess. There's a bit of fruitiness too that I can't put my finger on quite. That nose is wonderful. There's just a hint of rye trickling through, like a little stream trickling through. 
Let's taste it. Oh, that's very nice. That is very nice. It's oak forward. It comes through with a lot of vanilla, some red fruit, maybe not quite cherry, but red fruit, some apple, maybe even some, um, some strawberry. The rye just barely shows up is like a small texture on the palate. Coming back to the nose, the rye is a little more prominent, the, ch the chocolate is a little more prominent, and that nut is just slightly more prominent. That's nice. The legs are ridiculous. That is oily as a son of a gun. Let's see. The American is a little round, uh, a little less sharp, a little less spicy, a little more uh, of a finished feel to it, like like they rounded off all the edges with that second barrel, with that used bourbon barrel. A lot of very similar notes. Um, there's a lot of very similar notes there. So they may be distilling this, which is just a shame that they aren't putting that on the, on the label. That's just total lack of good judgment, in my opinion. I like this better. I like this better than the American. The American's wonderful, but this is more interesting, bigger, more robust, This is, like I said, the 2021. Um, there it is, 91 proof. And Bomberger's is up next, which is 108. And then, of course, the mixtures is 41%. So, 83 proof. Hmm. So, same neighborhood. I like I like the Shanks better than the American Michter's American, which is saying a lot for me because Michter's American is one of my favorite daily drinkers. So you know, obviously this is a special release whiskey. You would expect, and at about double the price, you would expect this to be better, and it is better. Is it d twice as good as Michter's American? I don't know about that, and that's only if you can find this in the eighty-ish dollar range. Um, I've seen these as high as 150. This bottle is not worth $150. Do not spend $150 on chains. That's silly. I, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Wow, cool. Good job, Mictors. Thanks for watching, guys. We're doing, um, Bomberger's up next. Until next time, have a great day.